So in today's video, we're going to discuss ear reshaping, otherwise known as otoplasty or pinoplasty. Ear deformities come in a range of shapes and sizes, but there are some that are commonly corrected and some which are much harder to correct. The primary complaint that we see in children up to adulthood is prominent ears. Secondarily, we see excessively large earlobes or thirdly, torn earlobes. Otherwise, there are a number of atypical ear shapes which can be addressed by cosmetic surgery, but in some cases are too complex for the private surgery setting. Many patients historically had their ear shape improved under NHS care as a child, but we now see patients who didn't take advantage of that service, who are now adults, who have concerns about their ear shape and can no longer be treated by the NHS. In terms of the anatomical variations, we see often a combination of a failure to develop of the antihelical fold. This is the fold that sits just in front of the rim of the ear in a normal ear anatomy. And if you look at my ear here, you can just about see my helical rim sitting behind the anti-helical fold, which is a ridge just in front of it. In many patients with prominent ears, this anti-helical fold is poorly developed. As a result, their ears stick out. A second anatomical problem, which is often accompanied by the first, is a deep bowl. The bowl is essentially where you put your finger when sounds are too loud. And in some patients, this can be excessively deep, again, exacerbating prominent ears. Ear lobes that are too big or have been stretched by earrings are something else that we see. Torn ear lobes, again, are something else that we see. Both of these can be treated with local anesthetic surgery. In terms of more complex ear deformities, there are complaints such as lop ear or Stahl's ear, which affect the upper third. Both of these can be three-dimensional in nature and when mild can be treated in a private surgery setting, but when complicated or severe, often need NHS care. There are other ear complaints such as microtia, which is failure to develop of a normal sized ear, or accessory ear elements, which sit in front of the normal ear. These are typically addressed when children in a specialist children's hospital setting. If you book a consultation with us here at Adam Goodwin Surgery, we will discuss your ear shape and how it troubles you. We often see men who wear short hair being unable to hide their ear deformity and so often wear hats. Ladies with ears they don't like very rarely wear their hair up and often have long fringes. These patients sometimes have already had ear correction surgery as children. It is important to share with us your job, any activities that you do, as both of these will affect how active you can be in your recovery. We will also discuss any medication that you take that might interfere with ear surgery, such as blood thinning medication, blood pressure medication, or if you're diabetic. We will also discuss any allergies you have to medication or any other treatments. We will discuss whether you have any familial scar problems, and if you've had any ear piercings, and if you have any personal history of scar problems. These are more common in darker skin, but can occur in any skin type and are not uncommon in and around the ear. If you have prominent ears, which constitutes the largest number of the ear complaints we see, then the surgery is performed under local anesthetic. This is also true for prominent earlobes or torn earlobes. Any number of these treatments can be combined in the same operation. You will be sent some paperwork and this video to watch before your surgery and we will sign the paperwork on the day. We will take some photos. We will then perform a local anesthetic ear block. This is a combination of three local anesthetic injections to make the entire ear numb. The first is the worst injecting below the earlobe. If we leave this for a minute on each side, then the majority of the ear it becomes numb, and that allows us to inject the second into the crease behind the ear, and the third into the ridge of the anti-helical fold itself. These are much less painful following the first injection. The surgery takes place behind the ear with a small cut sitting in the fold. What we do through this incision is either exaggerate the anti-helical fold to bring the top of the ear in or reduce the conchal bowl or a combination of both. We also then further reinforce the bringing of the ears in by a special stitch which goes from the bowl 
to the bony skull. A combination of the, these three techniques is for the vast majority of patients adequate to bring their ears in. Overcorrection is difficult but undesirable. Ear lobe surgery is typically performed with a scar either between the ear and the face for reduction or along the line of the tear if it's for earring tear problems. Some of the more complex ear anatomy problems have very specific and detailed surgeries. And if you believe you have one of those, then perhaps send us a photo of your ear deformity and I'll be able to advise you as to what can be done over email and if it's suitable for a private hospital setting. Following ear reduction surgery, then patients are placed in a bandage, which is quite obvious, and it will prevent you going about your normal duties and business. You can go to the shops or do light exercise wearing a hat, but the way you look will make you stand out from a crowd. Typically, we bring you back at one week following your surgery to remove the bandage and inspect the wounds. There will be dissolving stitches. At this point, you will notice your ears are swollen and stiff and a little black and blue. This is normal. The color will take a week or two to settle. The stiffness may take three to six months or even longer to settle in some cases. The ears may be quite sensitive or quite uncomfortable in the one week recovery period. And if necessary, we can give you some strong pain medication to help with this. Once the bandage has been removed, we suggest that you wear a headband at nighttime to protect the ears from being pulled away from the scalp while rolling around on a pillow. We strongly suggest that you don't do any contact sports like football, rugby or martial arts for six weeks following this type of surgery, but gentle exercise including swimming can be resumed at two weeks. By the end of the second week most patients are back to normal activity. Any patients with children will be able to look after them throughout their recovery and people who work from home will be able to do this without any concerns. It is only people who work in an office or face-to-face -face with clients that might struggle for certainly the first week and potentially the second week after surgery. Complications following ear surgery are not uncommon. The main one is based around the nature of the posterior technique. This is much safer and has a much lower complication rate than the old fashioned techniques, which used to involve taking the skin off the cartilage and reshaping the cartilage directly. Posterior techniques do have a tendency in between 15 and 20% of patients to drift forward a little. For these patients, all we can do is wait six months until the swelling and stiffness has subsided and then operate on the ear again to bring it back in. This is not disastrous but is disappointing both for the patient and the surgeon but is to be accepted as the complication of this particular technique. Thankfully infection is rare but if you have signs of heat or you believe there might be some swelling or your ears look or feel warm to the touch then please get in touch with us even if it's during the first week after your surgery. Asymmetry is common before surgery and is likely to be common after surgery. Our main aim of ear reduction or ear lobe reduction is to make the ears less noticeable, but exact symmetry is unlikely. Many patients have not only asymmetry of the ears themselves, but also skull asymmetry, which leads to the ears being larger on one side or even higher or lower on one side than the other. These will not be corrected by ear reshaping surgery. Ears may also be overly sensitive to stimulus or touch, immediately following ear surgery, and this can be most noticeable in cold weather. Please bear this in mind and wear a hat for your immediate recovery. Lumpy, adverse scarring is rare following ear surgery, but not impossible. If you believe that your ear shape troubles you, or is a source of concern regarding your appearance, then please get in touch with us here at Adam Goodwin Surgery. We would happily book you an appointment and share with you the surgical process and what you can expect as an outcome. Our contact details are available at the end of the video.